Okay, this is just a quick example of how we can use the probabilities using the Boltzmann factor. Um, so again, uh, what we're trying to do in this case is we're going to say, you know, the temperature of, um, of you know, okay, the, the SAR, uh, Vega, and Lyra. Um, uh, so, so the temperature of the star is 9,500 Kelvin, so 9,500 Kelvin. By the way, it's important to always use Kelvin when you're doing these calculations. Um, they, the, the, these calculations only work whenever you use Kelvin. So if you're ever given a, a, a temperature in Celsius or Fahrenheit, you're going to have to convert. Um, so we're going to estimate the probability that a hydrogen atom on a on Vega's surface is, uh, is in the N equal 2 energy level versus it being in the n equals one level. And again, just a reminder, the hydrogen atom, n equals one, uh, the energy is equal to minus 13.6 EV. And then for the n equals two, the energy, that's one, energy two is equal to minus 13.6 divided by four EV, which for whatever reason, I can never remember, I think it's 3.4. Oh, 3.4, negative 3.4 EV. Okay, so um, so again, the probability of being in energy two divided by the probability of being in energy one is just the Boltzmann factor of E2, e to the minus, K, e to the minus E2 over KVT, divided by E to the minus E1 divided by KVT. Okay, and so, we can just go ahead and plug in those numbers. So um, E2 is E to the minus, uh, um, the, the, and you have to make sure you include the negative sign, 3.4 EV. Um, uh, KVT is actually, uh, um, the value of KVT is just um, uh, 1 40th um, EV, it turns out. Um, uh, you can see that they actually have that in problem T4B1, actually, um, if you need to find it again. Um, it's e to the minus um, negative 13.6 EV divided by KBT. Again, KBT is just 1 40th EV. Um, so, and again, uh, we can actually arrange that in kind of a different way, which is that uh, we can bring this up and get a minus sign. So we get e to the, I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and make that the plus. Uh, 3.4 EV, um, and then we're going to subtract because there's a minus, there are two minuses, that's a plus, but when we bring it up, it'll become a minus again. So minus 13.6 EV, uh, all divided by 1 40th EV. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that calculation. So 3.4 minus 13.6. Um, gives us a minus 10.2, so it's equal to my, e to the minus 10.2 divided by 1 40th. Um, and that's all, uh, and, and those the EVs will cancel out. So. Um, this is, of course, just e to the minus 10.2 times 40. Um, so if I just uh, multiply this by 40, um, it's e to the minus 408, um, and so if we take e to the minus 408, we're going to get a pretty small number. Um, so uh, I'll just leave it that way, e to the minus 408. Um, so it's uh, really unlikely, even at this super high temperature, uh, to actually um, to be in level 2 versus uh, level 1. Okay, um, I actually made a bit of a mistake, but I'm going to go ahead and stick with it uh, because um, because I think it's useful. Um, uh, this uh, one over forty EV uh, that that actually that's at room temperature, um, which we're obviously not at. I said at the beginning that T is equal to nine thousand five hundred Kelvin. Um, so this is this is actually the probability of it being uh, in um, in those states at room temperature. Um, if I actually want uh, the probability at this temperature, I need to take the probability of E2, probability of E1. Um, that's equal to, again, this difference is still E to the minus 10.2, but now I actually have to keep my KVT here. 
And what I need to do is I need to calculate KBT uh, at this temperature. Uh, so KB um, uh, in uh, EV is actually, uh, let's see if I can find this, um, uh, the Boltzmann constant in a quick internet search shows that the Boltzmann constant in EV per Kelvin is just 8.62 times 10 to the minus 5 uh, um, EV per Kelvin. Of course, I could have converted it, but I don't feel like it. Um, and so, uh, so the KBT in this case is equal to um, 8.62 times 10 to the minus fifth EV per Kelvin. And then the, uh, the temperature is 9,500 Kelvin. And so when I do that calculation, I'm gonna get something a little bit more reasonable for the number of uh, atoms uh, in that higher state. So that gives me a uh, KBT of 0 0.82, um, and that's uh, in EV. All right, and so now if I take um, negative 10.2 divided by 0.82, I actually get, um, this is uh, the probability is e to the minus 12, 0.4, um, and if I take uh, e to the minus 12.4, I get that this is 4.1 times 10 to the minus 6. Um, so it's still much more likely to be, uh, it's a million times more likely to be in, energy, in the first energy state than the second energy state, uh, but uh, we still have, you know, one out of every million or four out of every million um, or so are going to be in uh, that higher energy state. So I hope that was useful. Um, again, I showed you a couple of things. So one, I showed you uh, how to do this calculation at room temperature, which was actually not what was being asked, um, where I used one over 40th EV, uh, uh, which is the which is what KBT is at room temperature, but not at uh, 9,500 K. And then we redid the calculation um, for the actual uh, temperature of Vega uh, and um, found uh, that um, there are quite a bit more uh, um, hydrogen atoms, although still not that many, in the second energy state compared to the first energy state uh, in um, the uh, in that star. Um, of course, you still see them. Uh, uh, you, you'll still see those that light because although only four uh, out of every million will be in that state, um, uh, there are lots of hydrogen atoms in a star, so you'll still definitely see it. Uh, so that's the whole idea. I hope that was helpful, and I'll see you in class.